In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at creating a responsive table in our websites. Now, a responsive table is one that can be viewed at a smaller screen size quite easily. Uh, basically, this table it looks pretty good at most screen sizes anyway, because it's not an overly wide table. But if I was to bring my browser size down to a fairly small mobile phone screen, you'll notice that this horizontal scroll bar appears, and that makes our table a bit easier to view at that small screen size. Okay, at a tablet size, which is probably somewhere around there, it looks fine, and at the desktop size, which is full screen, looks pretty good as well. We're going to be learning a few cool formatting tricks as well, like putting your background in and how to get your rows different colors in the table. Okay, so let's get started by going into our accounts and making a new folder called AFL Ladder. Inside of that AFL Ladder folder, you should have an Images folder. And we've just got one image in there, which is our background. Once you've got those folders all set up, we're good to go in brackets. So let's start today by making ourselves a new document. And before we start typing, we'll just go to Save As. And we're going to save this in the folder we just created. So I'll just go into my web design folder and find the AFL ladder. And I'm just going to call it ladder.html. Click Save. Once we've got that, we are good to start, so let's put in our doc type tag up the top to tell the computer we're making our HTML document, and then we'll put in our HTML tags to get started. Now don't forget inside the HTML tag at the top here to put lang equals en to make your language set to English. And then we can start our head section for our web page. In the head section today, we've got a title, and that title is going to say 2016 AFL Ladder and do a dash and write top four. We're just doing the top four teams from the 2016 season. Uh, we are going to come back and link a style sheet up to this web page. That's going to come a bit later. We just want to get the HTML stuff written in first, then we can worry about the styling a bit later. So we're finished with the head section now. So we'll go below that, and we can add in the body section. In the body section today, we're going to wrap everything up in an article tag. Okay, so articles are the basically the main section of your content that sit on your web page. So we put the article tag in first, and then we're going to stick a table in. Okay, so once we've got the table tags, we're going to add our first table row. So TR means table row. Inside that table row, you need to add a TD tag to add some table data or some data to that row. Okay, it basically adds a column in. So in this first table data cell here, we're simply going to write 2016 AFL ladder dash top four teams. Okay, that's going to be the heading in our table. So as it is a heading, I might even put some H1 tags around that just to make it stand out a little bit better. Okay, so that'll do for that row of our table. Let's go down and add another row into our table. So do another TR tag. Inside of that, we're going to do the top row. Here we are. I'll go back to the example. We're going to do this red row here. Okay, this was our title at the top here. We've got that in. Now we're just going to put in all the little headings for each of the columns. Okay, so we've got that table row inserted. To put the first column in, you need to put in a TD tag, or in this case, we're going to put a TH tag, which stands for a table header row. That basically just centers and makes the text bold. Okay, so the first thing we're going to write in is the POS, which stands for position. Down on the next line, we're going to add another TH tag in, which makes a new column. And we're going to write the word club. Next row, we're going to do another TH. We're going to do a P, which stands for the amount of games played. And then we're going to do another one, which has a W, which is the amount of games they've won. Next one's going to be an L for loss. Next one's going to be D for draw. And the final column we're going to add in is PTS, which obviously stands for points. So they're the seven different columns that we're going to have in our table. And these are now become header, uh, header sections for the, each column. So if I save that up and have a preview, you might see them come out in bold. They're going to look pretty ugly at the minute. Here comes our preview, though. You can see that they are bold, though. And they will be centered once we get this table looking good. OK, 
Okay, so that's that second row of our table done. Let's go in and add the third row of our table now. So we're basically getting down to the data in our table now. So we've got the one, two, three, and four teams, and all the data from the season. All right, so in this next one, I'm going to add in some TD tags. What I'm going to do is actually copy these TD tags another six times, so we end up with seven of them. And then once I've done that, I'm going to copy the whole table row, because we need another three of these to have all four of our teams in the table. So I've got the basic structure of our table made up. I've just got to fill in the gaps now. Okay, so in this top one that I was just working on before, we've got to do the team that came first. Okay, so the team that came first at the end of the 2016 season was the Sydney Swans. So what we're going to do, first of all, we'll look at the heading for the first column. It's the position they came. Okay, so the first column down in this row is going to say number one. You can see up here the second column asks for the club name, so we write in Sydney Swans. How many games they played, so they played 22 games. How many did they win, they won 17. How many did they lose, they lost 5, which means they drew none. And the amount of points they ended up on at the end of the season was 68. Okay, So if we save that and have a look, we should have the next row of our table completed. Okay, it looks very ugly with the formatting at the moment but it has got the Sydney Swans in there and their details. So now we're just going to do the other three teams. So coming in second place, we put the two in the first section then we put in Geelong Cats. In the third column they won 22. They had, oops, what am I doing here? Pressing the wrong buttons. They played 22 with 17 wins. 5 losses, no draws, and 68 points. So basically the same as the Swans. And then we get to do the same again for third place, which is Hawthorne Hawks. So we'll do third place, Hawthorne Hawks. They played 22 games with 17 wins, 5 losses, no draws, and 68 points. Okay, when we get down to the final team, which is the fourth team here, Put in fourth place, and it was GWS Giants. They played 22, they won 16, which means they lost six games, no draws, and they ended up on 64 points. All right, so that is our table populated now. So I'm just going to just delete some empty rows here that we don't need. All right, so that was pretty easy. Okay, a bit of copy and pasting, it wasn't too hard to fill out that table. And you can see in the example now we've got all the information in that we need. So it's just a matter of styling it up now to make it look good. Alright, so a couple of things we can do back here in the HTML. First thing, where it says table, what I'm going to do next to that, I don't have to do this in the CSS, I can use it HTML to align this table in the center of the page. So just next to the word table, write align equals and in quotation marks write center. When you save that you'll see that the table is pushed over into the center of the page. Alright, so that's handy. The other thing I want to do is get this heading spanned across all of these columns. Okay, at the moment this heading just sits in the first column. Okay, it's making this first column very big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for our heading here that says 2016 AFL ladder and in the TD section at the start of the line, it's going to put a space and we're just going to write col span equals and in quotation marks write seven. So it's going to stretch across seven different columns. Okay, now if we have a look, it looks a bit nicer. So this heading now spans across the entire width of the table. It's basically merged together all those seven columns that were in that first row. Alrighty, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, what we need to do now is make a style sheet up so we can start to style our page using CSS. So I'm going to go to File and New, and I'm going to go to Save As. And again, you're going to have to go back to the account. Uh, sorry, to the folder where you are saving all this work. So this is the AFL letter folder, and you need to call it Style.CSS. Okay. Before we start styling, we just need to link the HTML file up to that style sheet. So go back to the head section at the top of your HTML file. Underneath the title, just write the word link. 
and then rel equals style sheet in quotation marks and then write href equals and choose style.css close your pointy brackets okay so that line has just connected our html document to this style sheet okay so whatever we style up in here will be applied to our ladder.html page Alrighty, so I think we are good to go. The first thing we need to style up is the body section, the main part of our web page. Okay, so let's write in the word body and open up the curly braces. Let's set up the fonts like usual. So the font family will be a sans serif font. The font size, I'm actually going to go a little bit smaller than usual. Instead of 1 em, let's go 0 0.9 em. Just a little bit smaller. And as always, we want the line height set to 1.5 em. So a little bit of space between each line. Now I want to put a background image into this document, okay? Instead of just having a plain white background, what I want to do is put a picture of an AFL field in there. So, I've saved the picture in the images folder, so I'm going to write background-image, and then do a colon, and write the word URL, and then in brackets you just need to search through the images folder and select the background.jpg. Don't forget to put a semicolon at the end of that line. So that single piece of code there will put a background image onto your web page like so. Now I'm not, it's pretty hard to see um, this picture at the moment because it's such a large photo you can really only see the light post at the top. So what we're going to do is fix that by adjusting its size a little bit. So I'm going to go to background-size and choose cover. What that's going to do is squish our picture down so it fits nicely in the page now. And you can actually see the MCG, which is the most famous AFL ground in the country. And the last thing I want to do, this won't really affect us, but just to lock that background in position. So if we were to make our table bigger and scroll down the page, the background would stay put and it wouldn't actually scroll with the rest of our page. So we just put background attachment as fixed. I won't bother previewing that because it's not going to make any changes for now. But that's our body section styled up. Next thing I want to style up is the table and start to make it look good. So let's put in the word table. Okay, so we just go back to our HTML for a second. Here's our table here. Everything inside those brackets, which is all our data, everything inside those table tags is going to be affected by what we write in here now. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is put a border on my table. Okay, and I can specify a few things here with the border. I want it to be one pixel in size. I want it to be solid. And I want it to be colored black. Okay, so write those three things in one after the other. It's a one pixel border that's solid and it's black. If you save it and have a look, a bit hard to see, but actually I'll just have to click off it for a sec, there we go, we've got this black border going around our table. Okay, we'll keep going though to make it look a bit better than that. Uh, what we're going to do next is do border-collapse and set it to collapse. We're going to set the color, oh sorry, the opacity of our table to 0 0.95 and the final thing we're going to do is just stretch our table out a bit, just change its width to about 85% of the screen size. When we say that, you should see a much larger table now. Not much happening with the borders that you can see at the minute, but it's starting to look a bit better. You do need to get some colour in there, so we'll do that in just a sec. That's our table styled up for now. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to style up the table header, so the TH section. Okay, if you remember back on our original one here, the TH section was basically the subheadings or the name of each column in red here. So that's what we're going to style up now. So we're just going to go background. And the red color that I chose was hashtag A7 and then four zeros. That just puts the red color in the background of that row. And the other thing I want to do, actually, that should be enough. I was going to center align the text, but it should already be center aligned which it is, so that's good. Okay, that looks nice. Um, I might change the color to white for the text because at the moment that black is quite hard to read. So if we just have a better look at that, yeah, that looks a lot nicer now. So red background with white text on top. That's all we need to do to the TH row for now. 
um, to get our rows different colors if you look at the example we've got whites and grays just through here to get that what we need to do is write in TR which stands for table row and then we're going to put a colon right nth dash child and in brackets we're going to start with every even row so in every even row what we want to do is change the background color so let's just write background again and the color we want to go to I'll show you what it is it's E8 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 and that's going to hopefully make every second row a light gray color which it has done these other two rows we just want to set them to white so that's a pretty easy one what we're going to do further down underneath this TR nth child even we'll do the opposite now we'll do TR and the child and in brackets right odd so every odd row in the table now we're going to change the background color to white save that have a look and now we've got every second row in our table going to white this header though at the top here we'll need to fix okay I don't want that one to be white I actually want that to be blue all right so the way we fix that is we have to go back to our ladder.html document and find where our header is. Okay, so it's that TD coal span area. And what we need to do is just change this TD here and give it a class name. Okay, so I'm going to come after the coal span and just write class equals, and you can think of any name, I'm just going to call it header, something meaningful. And by giving that TD section a class name, we can now style up that TD section and it won't affect any of the other TDs that we see throughout the document. Okay, it's got its own unique name. So let's style up this header section. So back to your style sheet now, just go back down the bottom. It's going to make a bit of room here so we can see what's happening. And I'm going to write dot header, which shows me I'm going to style up that header class that I just made. And what I want to do is change the background color to a blue color so it matches, I guess, the AFL logo. So write hashtag 005CB7. And I'm going to change the color of the text to white. So just write color white. Saving that. Now you've got a nice, uh, nice looking header row there. We've got the nice looking subheaders. Everything's coming together pretty nicely. I do want to center the text though throughout this table and I wouldn't mind putting a bit of padding between each row I think everything's a little bit clumped together at the moment so what I'm going to do now on the next line here I'm going to style two things up at once I'm going to style the TH section which is my subheadings so I'm going to put a comma and I'm going to style up the TD sections as well which is all the other data in the table so it is possible to style up two things at the same time by writing them in just with a comma separating them so what I want to do is put in a text align feature and set it to center. So that just centers all the text in the table. And the other thing we want to do is put some padding in. So it's got a bit of room to breathe. So padding around each side will be 10 pixels. And when we save it now and have a look at the table, you can see there's a little bit of extra space now around each row. And you've got a nice big heading up the top here. Um, all the text is centered. So that's looking pretty good. The last thing we need to do now, if we just go back and have a look, is make this table mobile responsive. Okay, if I was to resize it really small now, there's no horizontal scroll bar that allows me to scroll across and have a look at the rest of this table. Okay, so what we're going to do is put one last thing in right down the very bottom. We're going to start up the article section. So right in the Word article, Oops, open up your curly braces. So we're just making a few typos here. Okay, and all we need to do is write overflow dash x and set it to auto. And that there makes your table mobile responsive. So if we save that up and test it, hopefully now when we get down to a nice small size, our table, there it is, gets a horizontal scroll bar. All right, every other size should be looking pretty good. All right, so that's how you make a responsive table using a bit of HTML and CSS.